Hi YouTube, welcome to another oil filter cut up video. Today I've got three filters from STP or scientifically treated petroleum. And before I begin, I want to mention that all of these filters apply to the same vehicle as all the other filters I've looked at so far on this channel, which includes all of these and all of these. So if you watch any of my prior content, just know that this is an apples to apples kind of comparison. So these filters are currently available in three different levels of price and performance. And there are a few different ways to tell them apart, but the most obvious is the color, with the lowest tier being blue and the highest tier being silver. If that's not something you can remember easily, uh, next time you're standing in the aisle at AutoZone, you can just take a look at the model number on the filter. The lowest tier will have just the five digits, like this you see here, the S2808. If you look at the mid-tier, you'll see there's an XL tacked on the end, which stands for Extended Life. And for the top tier, you'll see an ML at the end, which stands for maximum life. So what sets these guys apart specifically? Well, aside from what little the packaging tells us, the answer is multifaceted. So I'm going to start by explaining how the exteriors of these filters compare, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut these open so we can take a look at the cartridges and the valves and everything on the insides to get a really complete look. So. As I mentioned, the packaging doesn't tell us a whole lot, but what it does tell us is how many miles that each filter has been engineered to last for, with the lowest tier being engineered to last 5,000 miles, the XL version 10,000, and the ML version 15,000. So there are a few caveats with that. If you look at either of the uh, two higher tiers, you'll see a little note on the side of the packaging that says you can really only expect that longevity if you use synthetic oil, which is not uncommon for high mileage filters to say you have to use synthetic oil, but just be aware. Also, all three of these filters have on the packaging a little note down at the bottom in fine print that says, refer to owner's manual for oil and filter change intervals. Now, I'm pretty sure that's on there for uh, liability protection because if you run your engine for 15,000 miles and you blow it up somehow, STP doesn't want to be on the hook for that, so that's probably why that note's on there. So, well, 15,000 miles is probably what this filter is capable of. I don't see any reason to doubt that. They're, I don't get the impression that they're willing to stand behind that number as a guarantee, so it is what it is. So let me go ahead and dig into the filters themselves. First we have the cases. Now all of these look to be identical, but technically the lowest tier is a little bit smaller in diameter and slightly taller overall, but that's about the only real difference as far as the size goes. The case thicknesses, after looking at a bunch of different filters you know, over the prior videos that I've done, it generally ranges from 10 to 20 thousandths of an inch thick. The lowest tier is always the thinnest, and that may or may not thicken as you work your way up through the tiers. So once I get these guys cut, I'm going to definitely measure that so we can see how STP compares. But regarding paint, the lowest tier has a nice glossy finish to it like most other filters do out there. The XL and ML versions have this kind of a matte stipple, which isn't that aggressive, but STP still advertises that as a non-slip grip. Now I've got a Fram filter here, and they're kind of known for their grippy non-slip dip that they, they put on these guys. And you can see just side by side how much more aggressive the Fram is. Now, personally, after having used a Fram, I don't even think that's quite aggressive enough because I don't have oil on these gloves, but it's still not really all that grippy if you ask me. So if I was in charge, I would prefer that all filter cases have a nut welded on the top like this k Performance Gold does. So if you want that, you'll have to uh, go out of your way to find a filter that offers that. So that would just be my preference, even if it drove up cost by 50 cents. Anyway, um... Moving on to the underside, all three of these STPs had this little plastic uh, cover over the bottom. Now, I have seen it before from other manufacturers, but not that often. And when I have, it's been because 
that manufacturer went out of their way to advertise that they pre-lubed their seals. And I'm, I was, I've always assumed that that's to keep that lube from rubbing off on you know your cardboard box when it's in shipping and whatnot. But I haven't seen on the website or on the packaging that STP says that they do that. So even if these aren't lubricated, they might have those plastic cases to keep debris from getting inside your filter while it's in shipping before you put it on your engine. But in any case, since not every manufacturer does it, I'm glad to see that STP does. It just shows that they took a little extra care in their packaging all around. So uh, as far as the gaskets go, the lowest tier has what's very typical of bottom end offerings. They've got a rubber gasket that's got a rectangular cross section. That's what you'll see 99% of the time. Okay, If you move up to the higher tiers, typically you'll see the same shape, but you'll get a better material, silicone, which is uh, superior for its mainly extreme temperature performance, both at the hot and cold end. And that's exactly what we get on these XL and ML versions, okay? These red gaskets are made out of silicone, but they also have a unique cross section, which is also uncommon when you go to other other manufacturers. I have seen, um, I think K&N do this, and I I wanna say, yeah, K, I think K&N one, has one that's very similar, but not identical. And you can see that for these, these STPs on the ML and XL that the portion that touches off on the filter itself is nice and flat and the part that touches the engine is rounded and there's this little lip on the inside. Now the point of the lip is to engage with this undercut on the base plate here and the point of that is to keep the gasket connected to the filter once you go to unscrew it at your next oil change. Now I haven't really in the past, I hadn't really thought about, okay, so what? So what if this filter, this gasket gets stuck to your engine? You just peel it off. Okay, well, I had uh, somebody comment on one of my previous videos and said that, well, they didn't notice when uh, they pulled their filter off that, I, I don't know what brand it was, but they had that happen to them where the gasket got stuck to the engine. And I don't know if it was a blind change or if they just failed to notice, but... It got left on there when they put the, the replacement filter on, which ended up getting two gaskets all mangled up together, which, of course, didn't seal right, and oil leaked out. And if I remember correctly, it was a racing application, and that leaking oil got dripped onto some really hot surface, like an exhaust manifold or something, and caught on fire, and it was a, turned out to be a really big deal. So it's more important than you think, though it may not be much of a risk to the average you and me who's just changing the oil on their daily drivers. But it's nice to know that you don't have to worry about it when you get into the you know, higher price product. So moving on to the center, well, the inlet holes, okay? These eight holes here on the base model are where the oil flows into your filter before it gets filtered and then comes back out to the center hole. Now, if you add up the uh, surface area of all these holes, you get a total inlet area of approximately 0.241 square inches. And that bumps up to about 0.313 square inches on the ML and XL versions. And though you only get five inlet holes, they are a lot bigger as you can see. And these guys were elongated. Now this is just a side note, but I've only seen five inlet holes on two other filters that I've reviewed so far. And those were the base plates from the Royal Purple and the Mobile One. And I got excited because I thought these might turn out to be identical, which might give me a clue as to um, the fact they're, they're all manufactured from the same place, but I don't think that's the case. Just after looking at them even quickly, you can tell they're not the same. So just something I noticed. So lastly, you have the threaded center holes. Now all of these have an M20 by 1.5 thread, and that's why you have this... Uh, M and 20 marking on the bottom of the ML and XL versions. But as I've seen from other manufacturers, the number of complete threads on the inside is less for your lower tier. In this case, you get four threads, and on these other two guys, you get five. So 
That's all I have for the exteriors. Let me go ahead and cut these up so we can take a look at the inside. So here is everything disassembled. I checked the case thicknesses for all three of these guys and the thickness comes in at about 20 to 21 thousandths for each of these. So that's really impressive, particularly at the low end to have a thick case like that. So I like that. As far as the anti-drain back valves are concerned, AutoZone's website doesn't really address what materials these are made out of, though they typically are the same as the gaskets. So I'm 95% sure that this is gonna be rubber. Well, these red ones are made from silicone. End caps, as far as the end caps go, all of them are metal, though the XL and ML versions have a much more attractive, shiny look to them. And yes, this scratch is from me, so it was even more beautiful to begin with. But if you want to know what filter takes the best looking interior crown, that would be the K&N Performance Silver, because not only do they have the shiny end caps, but their springs are also, I don't know, plated in something that's shiny. And even their center tube is nice and shiny looking. So whether that matters at all, I can't say, but I was I was kind of stricken when I opened the K&N at one point and saw how much, I guess, care went into how it looked. So anyway, uh, the coil springs that... Uh, you'll find inside of these guys kind of vary in design a little bit, but their function is to just take the filter cartridge and compress it against the anti-drain back valve and base plate to keep everything, all the, everything sealed up well. I like seeing coil springs over kind of the sheet, sheet metal stampings you'll find sometimes in other filters. It just seems like a more elegant solution, so I always like to see that. As far as the... Um, emergency bypass valves go, most manufacturers kind of follow this same design here of having a coil spring and a little seal that is captured by this little metal housing here that's tack welded to the end cap. So I've seen these little seals come in a few different materials, one of which is what we have here, which is a rubber. And that one kind of gives the most out of all of them that I've seen, which gives me the impression that it will seal better than any of the others. The other two are a hard plastic and you can see that these have been injection molded because you get the gate right there. That's what both the XL and ML versions have. One that The last one that I've seen that I don't see here uh, with the STPs is looks like a compressed fiber board or a cardboard almost that's really hard. I, it hasn't really particularly impressed me because it just kind of seems cheap but functionally they're probably all fine. But anyway, they all kind of use the same style for the emergency bypass valves. Center tubes, they all use the helical seam design, which is better for strength over the axial seam versions. And the little holes that the oil can flow through are nice and big and have generous openings. So really, there's nothing to critique here. It's just how the center tubes ought to be designed. So I'm just glad to see that they did a good job on all of these across you know, all three price points. Lastly, I've got the uh, filter media that I want to talk about. As far as total filtration area is concerned, here's here's a little sample I cut from, from each of these guys, but before I cut them, I took the whole thing and stretched it out and took that overall length and multiplied it by the exposed width uh, before this thing was all cut apart. And that gave me total filtration areas of 81.6, 100.7 and 89.6 square inches for the standard XL and ML versions, respectively. As far as material goes, most manufacturers, when they have three different tiers, give you cellulose or wood pulp at the low end, a synthetic resin for the mid tier, and a fully synthetic media for the top end usually with a metal screen support behind it just to make it robust. And that's with one exception, that's pretty much what STP is doing. Their their website doesn't say specifically that their material on this low end is made from cellulose. What they do say is that it's an advanced micropore technology filter media. That's probably just a fancy way of saying that it's cellulose, but I can't be 100% sure, but I'm pretty close. Uh, the XL is a synthetic resin, and the ML is fully synthetic, but instead of a wire mesh backing, 
it's got a polymer backing on it, which I'm hoping you can see here, but I came across that only, I've come across that only one time before, and that was on a Pure Later boss, which is one of my personal favorites, and I just like to see that. I think it it attaches to the uh, media itself well, whereas the metal backing tends to just kind of separate when you pull them apart, and I just think it's kind of neat. I just, I don't know, I just like it, so... I was pretty pleased to find that on uh, the ML version here. Um, efficiency. Usually at this point in a filter breakdown, I like to talk about efficiency, which is really the whole reason we're here, right? If we're filtering our oil and we care enough about it to watch a YouTube video on it, you want to know what kind of efficiency you get. Unfortunately, the XL version is the only one where I could find actual data on it, and that one says you get 99% efficiency for particles greater than 20 microns in diameter per ISO 4548-12 or whatever. That information was just not available for the standard and the ML versions, so I reached out to SDP to ask them, hey, can you tell me what your efficiency is? And they said get in touch with AutoZone. So I reached out to them and they got back to me and said, we forwarded your request on to this or that department and they're going to get with you and they just never did. So if they give me that information, which I'm not holding my breath for, I'll be sure to put it in the show notes below. But typically in a setup like this where you have three different tiers, the lowest cellulose offering gives you 95% efficiency the mid-range is 97 and a half, 98, 99, somewhere in there. And then the top tier is 99, okay? So that's what I would expect just based on experience. But again, this is all the information I've got. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with STP's quality, particularly at their low end. What you get for five bucks is quite a bit, if you ask me. What I was honestly expecting was to see quality more in line with what Fram offered about two years ago, which in comparison was not that great. They had, they didn't even have metal end caps on, on those and their emergency bypass valves were not nearly as, I don't know, elegant. And yeah, you can go back and watch that if you like. But um, anyway, I'm pleasantly surprised with, with what you get for $5 from STP. Um, Anyway, before I wrap this up, if you want to see a particular brand of filter that I have yet to cover or haven't covered in a long time, please let me know in the comments so I can get to work on that. Also, if you benefited from this material, please uh, do me a favor and subscribe because that really helps me out. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.